Hi, guys. Uh, very good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the design meetup powered by IXDF Kerala and co sponsored by Experion Technologies. Dark patterns are one of the design techniques used in user interface to manipulate and influence users into taking action they might not have intended. These patterns exploit coincide biases and human behaviors, often leading individuals to make decisions that benefit the website or a platform rather than the user. They raise ethical concerns as their priorities, business goals over user well-being and informed choices. Our speaker today, Param, a UX designer, will be taking us through the topic dark patterns in UX design. Over to you, Param. Thank you, Mika, for this nice introduction. Yes. So now, now let's go to the topic for today. That is dark patterns in UX. So this is like how design seeks to control us. So basically, dark patterns are experiences, or it can be even interactions, designed to mislead or trick users to make them do something they don't really want to do. So that is basically uh, aiming for only the company's benefit. Now. Uh, talking about the history of dark patterns, uh, actually a designer, famous designer uh, called Harry Brignall, he first coined the term uh, dark patterns in the year 2010. And he defined dark patterns as a user interface that has been carefully crafted using subtle elements of cognitive manipula manipulation to trick users into doing something they don't intend to do so. Uh, especially, for example, if you are actually buying a product along with that, some compulsion for buying an insurance along with that along with that purchase. It's so uh, this is a history of dark pattern. Now uh, talking about why companies are using dark patterns. So basically, uh, uh, it's only for making profits to me uh, maximize profits. So how they are doing? It's like uh, one of the thing is like conversion rate, where they are pushing users to buy or sign up things or products. So another uh, uh, thing is like customer retention, like making uh, the users difficult to cancel a subscription. So as an example, then to collect data that we all know about Facebook and those things, how they are collecting data. So it's like tricking the users in a way like uh, getting more personal information grant, uh, through granting permissions, uh, default selections and those things. Now it's like, uh, pushing the users to buy premium account, like uh, to upgrade to a premium versions. It's like uh, through subscription options, which leads to the user to push users to upgrade to a premium versions and those things. Uh, another is like engagement and interaction, like uh, creating something uh, in a very beautiful way so that people start interacting with that con content or maybe that feature. So that is one thing. Another is like exploiting the user for imp through impulse buying, that is like um, uh, making the users spend thrift. Uh, then uh, it's like uh, when the users uh, are becoming spend thrift, definitely the company is going to gain. So they are going to get more revenue. And another uh, type uh, is like switch uh, uh, making the users to choose uh, self-service options. So that makes companies to minimize their uh, customer support and those things. So that is how the companies are using dark, pat dark patterns. Now let's move to the psychology behind the dark patterns. It's like we all know that all good designs are, uh, are manipulative to at least a small, uh, so, a small group of society. And uh, people, uh, users are also, uh, some of, most of the users are even uh, difficult for them to differentiate between the persuasive design and the manipulative design. That is becoming a bit challenging to the users. And basically these dark patterns work based on the theory of behavioral psychology and even uh, great companies like Amazon, Flipkart, uh, like most of the big companies, Google and all, they have uh, a special uh, people like behavioral psychologists. There is a big team and they will be uh, uh, learning a lot of tricks to hack brains. So through cognitive biases and which is actually uh, the assumptions that people make uh, uh, that are often incorrect. So that is one thing. And another thing is like, uh, we all know that human susceptibility to the cognitive uh, cognitive biases will evolve. So particularly, uh, so when we consider about the neurodiverse people uh, who are actually like uh, more often like they have a, a very great fear response and all things. 
So uh, they are actually prone to this cognitive biases because their uh, main uh, uh, there is one uh, part of brain called amygdala. So that is like uh, that is actually triggering the fear factor. So what happens is that when that fear factor is uh, triggered, it will closes all the it, all the other part of the brain will shut off, and this part is going to work. Uh, it is going to control the emotions, even even the body and everything. So. Uh, these people are actually creating uh, dark patterns by creating some fear factors and using this, they are controlling the users. So another thing is like um, uh, most in most of the designs, these kind of neuro uh, diverse users are not even considered. So that is actually uh, those people who, have, who, are, who are having mental challenges and those things are, uh, they also feel very difficult. So, so uh, and uh, many users even uh, doesn't even realize dark patterns. Uh, most of them are completely unnoticed and those things. And uh, yeah, so next is like uh, even the people who are having ADHD, autism and OCD and certain anxiety disorders, they are actually not even considered uh, while designing uh, such platforms. So it's very difficult actually. So uh, and the people who are having especially ADHD, uh, they have, they are more spendthrift. So these apps are designed in a way like uh, it, it is becoming an addiction to these people. So, and even certain people uh, are getting panic attacks when they uh, watch that countdown when a particular sale is happening. So when we open the app, we, uh, suddenly it will sh uh, show like uh, this is like a uh, Christmas Day sale that is going to end within one hour or two hours. So it is actually creating some kind of panic attacks to these uh, neurodiverse people. So which push, push them to even uh, share their personal informations or maybe even credit card informations. Uh, so, and another thing is like certain design firms, like they are using that pet design, like persuasion, emotion, and trust. And they are actually blending that with marketing uh, as well as psychology. Th uh, psychology. Uh, which is actually through this, they are actually creating, uh, triggering the actions and they are actually molding the user behavior using these things uh, in, in the way they want actually. So, and uh, definitely dark patterns are uh, deliberate designs, tricks uh, that, uh, that are actually harmful and also against the interest of the users, creating a very uh, bad experience to the user. And most of them are uh, designed in a way it's mostly unnoticed or maybe without any consent. So uh, it's, Definitely, it's unethical, uh, and it will definitely creating bad experience. And so, so even uh, all these things are there. Even a lot of e-commerce e websites are still using this dark patterns. So that is a hard truth. Now, talking about uh, dark, why dark patterns are really bad. So as I told, it's already it's unethical, and definitely it is going to bring a bad experience to the user. It is going to damage the reputation of the brand or maybe the company and this is hurtful for the users and uh, it is going to when uh, it's definitely when uh, the experience is bad definitely people are going to talk about this in uh, in online social medias and, and everything so that is going to result in a very bad name for and reputation for the company and also uh, dark patterns are misleading uh, it is definitely it will harm the human experience and it da damages the trust so, uh, and most of the users will deny, uh, so they will deny the user info and control over their experiences. And uh, they will definitely cause unintended purchases, addiction, overuse and privacy breaches. And uh, it is definitely against the customer uh, violation uh, rights, sorry, yeah. So now talking about different kinds of dark patterns. So, Actually, there is a um, FDA that is a US based uh, uh, organization. They have actually, uh, uh, I mean, uh, detected around more than 30 plus dark patterns. So here we can see some of them. Uh, these, these are very common uh, in our day to day life. So, yeah, so these are the so there are around 17 uh, commonly seen dark patterns, which is actually listed here. And now I will be taking uh, one by one. So next is, uh, so this is the one, uh, first one, that is the friend spam. 
here uh, we know that a lot of social media a uh, lot of uh, this linkedin and all we are commonly using so uh, these kind of uh, platforms actually uh, request mail access social media access in exchange of some desired outcome uh, so especially we can see similar kind of thing in linkedin where the, actually uh, so when you are looking at this you can see on the right side on the blue blue uh, uh, image uh, sorry, image with a blue background where you can see every career needs a strong network. And it also uh, wrote something like build your by uh, looking for your email contacts. So it's like uh, it's very deceptive because uh, 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 because the heading itself is like a bit confusing to the user. And you can see on the bottom also like uh, the email it is asking for the email and they have already uh, mentioned like we will import your ad, uh, address book uh, to suggest connections and those stuffs so that means they already uh, took our things only uh, so it's very deceptive in the sense like and you can even see there are two things like a continue button and a skip button continue button is made prominent and is placed on the left side and skip button is on the right side so here, when the uh, skip is made very, uh, it's it's not that much prominent. It's very hard to even read. And when the user clicks that, it is going to ask for another uh, pop up. Uh, that is like LinkedIn works best when you are connected to more people. So it's like uh, that. Uh, even uh, that message itself is like very disrupting. Like, uh, and they have placed that button on the uh, continue button is earlier it is on the on the previous screen it's on the left now they have uh, pur purposefully placed on the right and they uh, want the user to actually share their contacts that is our main uh, aim or agenda so uh, this is how that is working so uh, next is like forced continuity here uh, uh, that is very common nowadays like when we are actually uh, uh, trying some app as a trial version so when we are downloading an app uh, in a trial version uh, sometimes uh, like uh, it will be asking like uh, last asking your personal in information as well as your credit card details so it's like uh, even though it's for a trial version basically you need to have an uh, email id and you have to create a pa password so but it will definitely ask for other things as well like uh, so, uh, so when you are actually, uh, uh, and one of the interesting thing is that, uh, uh, as I told, like uh, the the company's main aim is to make profit. So you will share the credit card information. So what happens is that uh, maybe after it's, it can be a five day trial or maybe a month of trial. After a month, you will definitely uh, lose. I mean, you will forget completely, and you won't get any notification or any email. Or any message or anything uh, after two three months you will again check your bank account then that time you will be uh, uh, knowing that they have charged for this service for for this this much period so it's like uh, so that is a kind of dark pattern now it's like disguised ads so here we can see uh, lot of websites like uh, uh, file hippos of PD and CC cleaner where actually you can see the uh, ads uh, blend with the content so uh, so it it's uh, it makes the user feels that this ad itself is a part of this website and uh, they have made certain uh, clickable options so when the user will think something uh, it's a content so they have to just uh, click on it so that will make the user to click on them so this is like disguised ads. It's very confusing for the user. Next is like confirm shaming. So uh, here it's like a. Uh, so using your uh, the company is actually uh, use uh, using a trick uh, like uh, in a way like shaming the people for the option which they which they don't want to like for example if uh, for example if a user is declining uh, a subscription that time they will instead of declining they will uh, sh they will shame you in a way like uh, using certain words so that uh, the user will feel guilty about it so they won't uh, do that so for example duolingo is one of the famous app where you can learn la different languages so here they are actually creating this cognitive dissonance by uh, using certain uh, certain thoughts like uh, uh, when the user try to unsubscribe the option what happens is that that bird uh, starts crying 
and uh, which feels uh, very un uncomfortable to the user and also they have used some words uh, which will uh, which will, some words which which will be the user reads and he will get ashamed then he won't do it so that is how uh, this is another trick the companies are using so next is like bait and switch so here uh, we can see that even in uh, shopping malls and everything where actually uh, so here what happens is that the company advises advertises certain goods uh, at a very great offer it can be a price it can be uh, uh, maybe size and everything but the thing is that uh, by looking at that ad the user will uh, decides to uh, buy or go into the shop to buy products that time what happens is that he cannot see the product that is shown in that uh, ad uh, so uh, uh, when the user actually enters into the shop, what he can, he can understand is that he will get some other products in, for that price. Maybe 50 percentage here, they have put 50, sale up to 50 percentage. Maybe that 50 percentage is applicable to certain uh, clothing uh, for only top brands, not for every cloth you will get. So something like that. Uh, so here in this uh, uh, example, you can see a King Burger that is advertised. So that is what it's advertised. So uh, when the user goes to that burger shop and when he purchases the actual burger, uh, the actual burger will be in this type. So the difference is that in the burger which they advertised has a lot of veggie stuff, maybe a lot of chicken and a lot of uh, stuff, uh, fillings are there. But in actual burger, there is only cheese and some toppings are available. So that that is like uh, what the customer expects doesn't uh, definitely uh, it's very inferior to his expectations what he gets so that is bait and switch next is like hidden cost so here uh, i just related with the iceberg here because uh, the only the sailor will see the floating part and he couldn't even uh, imagine how much depth how much width size or size of the iceberg that is very hidden under the water beneath the water so same thing happens here like uh, user will uh, so user will check on some certain advertisement and those advertised price is very less and he will invest some time and effort and he will discover some uh, then what happens is that he decides okay let, let me purchase this product because it's available in a very good offer so when he clicks and when he uh, clicks the product and when he uh, after putting a lot of effort and time when he actually uh, purchases the product by clicking the shopping cart that time he will he will actually get to know that the actual price is not the real price so uh, the the price actually uh, advertised is not the real price so he will get a lot of others he can see a lot of other surcharges uh, along with that so it's like a very uh, it's like a definitely it's a dark pattern where people get confused during the checkout so ultimately it ends the uh, which makes the user to pay a high amount So here, so next one is Roach Motor. So Roach is actually the cockroach and Motor is like the multi-level uh, trap, you can say. So that's why I just put uh, Roach Motor, uh, that uh, image on the right side. So it's very interesting that uh, this uh, cockroach trap, that is actually uh, the working of the cockroach trap. It's like a, uh, so here it is actually discovered in US. So here what, what they will do is that they inside that uh, Motor, they will actually inside the trap they will actually put some uh, some stuff that will attract the cockroaches so the entry of the cockroach is very easy but uh, after it get trapped the exit i mean the escape part is very difficult so same uh, uh, ideology they have used for uh, dark patterns here what happens is that uh, here uh, signing and for example assigning an account is made very easy but uh, to uh, I mean to cancel an account, they will make it like a very difficult uh, difficult for the user. So that is how it's happening. So here, uh, for example, in Amazon, uh, uh, to actually start an account or signing into the account, it's it's made very easy. Uh, it's a very simple process. But uh, if you want to cancel an Amazon account, it's very hard. Uh, hard in the sense, not that hard. Uh, but they hide the options. 
the customer will be expecting uh, to cancel a subs, uh, cancel his account maybe under that personal account information but uh, they have nicely kept it in some other place under help and uh, support so that no uh, none of the customer will imagine that they will actually place that option uh, under help and customer service so that made uh, the user a bit difficult to cancel but it's not that difficult so uh, next thing is privacy is occurring. So here the name itself came from the famous CEO of Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg. So we all know that how uh, Facebook uh, uses our data uh, or leaks our data. So basically the ideology is that only like uh, taking our privacy uh, into their uh, control. So basically that's what happened. So here if you see the same thing like if you see certain uh, uh, like Facebook Messenger on the right side top uh, here you are getting a text message uh, asking like messengers will continuously upload your contacts uh, to contact with you uh, uh, contact you with your friends and uh, one of the interesting thing is that in that pop-up message you cannot even see a close button and uh, there is a two uh, or there is two uh, buttons are there uh, that is learn more and okay so you there is no option to even cancel you if you are not interested there is no option to cancel it you have to only press ok even if you go to learn more you will uh, you will see some uh, in, information after that again you will see a ok button so there is no option to even cancel that option so uh, that is one thing and another thing you can see in whatsapp these are the apps which we are continuously using nowadays in whatsapp also uh, this uh, once you start the account uh, they will only display a very minimal uh, information uh, and what happens is that most of the users are very busy they don't even read the terms and conditions and uh, definitely they will just simply agree and done that account will be created but uh, uh, one of the hardest truth is that when you click on the read more option uh, about the terms and condition policy there you will see they have already made a location uh, your data sharing all those options they have defaultly they have already selected yes you are ready to share so that's how the data is leaking so yeah that is privacy is occurring so we are actually uh, if we are uh, the thing is that if you are not paying for any anything so definitely we are the product so they, they are actually taking our data and selling our data so that's how they are making money so next is misdirection so here uh, it's like uh, the design is made purposefully that to shift the focus of the user. So they have two things A and B. Uh, the company wants the users to focus on B. They will made it in a way that uh, they will made that design in a way that the users will focus on B instead of A. So here you can see the Paytm. That is a very common app where we can actually do our uh, payment of anything like electricity bills, water bills, your DJ uh, cable connection, insurance, everything you can purchase using that app. So here the thing is that uh, you can see for auto there is a setup for automatic payment. So here the user is actually they want to pay some uh, some amount some around seven seven hundred rupees. So here it's showing two options. One is like pay seven uh, seven hundred and six rupees and set up automatic. That will automatically that will be set as a default selection. On the bottom you can see uh, pay to proceed the same amount. So here they have. Uh, purposefully made that as a default selection and in a hurry any user will never check these things and they will actually click on the button pay 706 and set up as automatic so definitely like that it will become a dark pattern so this this direction so next is like price comparison prevention so here uh, you can see like uh, in most of the websites uh, definitely uh, use uh, there is an option to compare prices so why that option because when we are actually buying any product so we definitely used to do some research even if i am buying a car or maybe a mobile or even a cloth uh, definitely i will compare the price or maybe the brand or maybe the quality and everything uh, i will definitely it's our nature of every user to compare with things so most of the websites you can see there is they are uh, they will be providing option to compare uh, with other products but certain websites uh, they won't allow to do so. When that happens, then definitely this price comparison pre pre prevention will become a black pattern. 
So here, uh, why the company is actually uh, using this trick, pushing the users to towards a profitable choice, which the company wants, not based on the user's interest. So here you can see uh, on the top, like there is a three uh, some uh, T-Mobile. So where you can actually compare compare uh, different, uh, I mean, models of the same mobile. So here uh, they have a three models, Magenta Max, Magenta and Essentials. So here uh, you can see they have only initially on the first screen, you can see they have uh, actually made as three cards. But here, the when you the comparison, the features they have mentioned is very less. The details are very less. So if a user want to actually uh, see the phone or maybe the plan, when he clicks, what happens is the next screen. It is actually showing as a pop up message with only showing the information of that particular product. So uh, so it's a very sneaky trick. So there, the user are restricted to compare that essential with other things or Magenta Max or Magenta. So likewise, it's it's like a price comparison prevention or maybe even feature comparison is also preventing. Uh, next is like trick questions. Uh, so here we can see that uh, we know that word matters. So uh, so it's definitely count in Q and A. So here uh, these uh, you can see on the right side uh, the first screen. Uh, like, are you sure you don't want not to opt out? So they have been given two options, yes and no. So th the thing is that this question is very tricky. Uh, uh, user, it's very misleading as well because you, it's very challenging for anyone to even uh, select the correct choice from, from that question. So uh, that is how a trick question uh, works. Now, uh, next is like sneak into basket. So here we already know uh, we have a we might have an experience like like uh, we'll be uh, shopping with a kid maybe your own kid or maybe uh, your family or friends kid. So the thing is that when you take those kids to any uh, supermarket, what happens is that these kids will get attracted maybe to some toffees or maybe to some packaging, uh, the color of the packaging something, and they will simply sneak that in. Uh, they will just take it and they they will just put it on the basket or the shopping cart. So usually the uh, parents or maybe the elders won't even uh, notice that. Maybe some some parents will get more notice during the checkout process. Some of them even uh, won't notice. When they go home, they will come to, oh, this is an excite. It's not required. How it came? Then we that time we start realizing. So same trick they are using in uh, this uh, sneak into basket. The thing is that when a user uh, try to buy some product, along with that, they will simply uh, add one or two pro products along with that. So uh, it is not based on the user's choice. It's like a default thing. So uh, maybe some users will, uh, uh, I mean, uh, they will uh, notice notice that during the checkout. Some Most of them doesn't even. So same thing, like for example, here the Derm store, they are having, uh, so it's a, a platform to sell uh, Hair, hair creams and those things. So they are actually uh, when the user buys a product, along with that they will add a Derm Store magazine along with that. That will be automatically added to the shop, uh, shopping cart without the prior consent. So uh, even you can see the same thing in uh, Sports Direct, where actually when the user buys a jacket, uh, along with that they will actually put uh, some other uh, small clothing also along with that. So even that is a bit cheaper. Uh, most of the time, the users will even they won't even notice it got added to the cart. So that is sneak into basket. Next is like triggering FOMO. That is fear of missing out. So here, this is a, a great trick the company is using by creating uh, anxiety to the users uh, because uh, some users will be uh, worried like. Uh, when they miss out something uh, which they feel it's very important or maybe exciting. So same thing. So uh, here that feeling is actually exploited uh, to the max. So for gaining profits, especially. So uh, for example, they the companies are actually creating a fake urgen urgency, maybe through countdowns or maybe telling that some certain stocks are uh, only certain stocks are left. So uh, these kind of things actually uh, 
create an anxiety to the user and it's they will feel like it's something uh, uh, very scare based on the time or uh, or uh, that will prompt the user to buy uh, things because they will uh, feel a sense of fear so they are going to missing out soon so that will push the user to actually uh, push or motivate the user to react quickly without even thinking and uh, that is uh, that is how it works so next is like social proof dark pattern uh, this is also widely seen nowadays uh, like uh, social proof is actually includes interviews uh, posts shares testimonials uh, reviews and everything so here uh, this is actually turning into a dark pattern when the companies are uh, using the uh, using these things to deceive users uh, by creating some uh, fake uh, fake reviews they are actually advertising a product and they are actually giving a fake testimonial testimonial fake reviews and those things so uh, then these this will these information will get fabricated and uh, these uh, using these fabricated reviews the company is earning a great profit of more than 70 percentage so that's how this is actually working social proof this is actually commonly seen in wide wider platforms any social media platforms so next is like scaremongering so here uh, it is actually uh, scaremongering is nothing but spreading stories that make people feel scared or worried so same a trick the companies are using like it's a fear tactics uh, which push the people to take actions without even thinking so uh, here you can see uh, certain apps like cc cleaner or maybe avast uh, suddenly when you open your own uh, laptop or maybe your desktop and you this software install in your system suddenly you will get a mess fake message uh, warning like we have detected this much viruses or maybe something like your uh, ip address has been exposed something like that so what happens suddenly the user will uh, will get exaggerated and uh, he will uh, it's uh, that will create a fear and tension and definitely he is going to click that uh, resolve button or maybe proceed that will lead to a page uh, where the users are pushed to buy certain products of their premium quality so that's how the scare mongering work now uh, next is like asking more than intended so as i told earlier itself in another example like when we are actually starting uh, maybe uh, so it's like uh, when you are actually start a trial sign up you don't need to give all your information basically you don't you just in a very ethical way you just need a signing option like uh, a email id and a password you have to create but most of the nowadays platforms they are asking for more your personal data personal information name address uh credit card details and everything so here the, that means the company is asking more uh, than they uh, intended so uh, maybe this providing the credit card for trials and those things are actually uh, uh, initially people will feel like okay there is nothing wrong in giving those things but they will get a good sur uh, great surprise after 2 3 months when they check their own uh, bank accounts because they won't even send any notifications or message and they will detect for they will detect some amount from your account uh, as a charge uh, for using their apps uh, next is the last one is like infinite sc uh, scrolling here uh, here you can see that uh, one big uh, corridor uh, which doesn't leads to anything it will it will actually showing some infinity so the user uh, the person who are actually on that uh, particular corridor he doesn't even know where to go like it is just a single path uh, that path will lead your uh, that will take you you cannot even turn right or left so same thing in infinite scroll where uh, actually what happens is that uh, this uh, nowadays uh, here the content loads uh, automatically when you scroll so uh, as a user Uh, even i will be uh, going into that particular application for maybe a purpose so suddenly i will get notice to some uh, contents that is loading there maybe some videos or maybe contents and i will keep scrolling scrolling and scrolling and finally i will lose my intention why i came there so it's like uh, uh, and we will be uh, going along with that so initially i will come to a particular 
platform then i will start scrolling i will read some stuffs or maybe i will be clicking on video and i will be watching that video uh sorry um, then i will come uh, then that will become a continuous action that will be like one step another step another step so we will lose our own uh, intention so that is how it's happening so that is widely seen in most of the social media platforms facebook twitter youtube and everything uh yeah so that is infinite scrolling and next is like post, what are the possible solutions to dark patterns so here uh one is data transparency here actually uh, provide, uh we have to uh, bring transparency uh, regarding the data why we are actually collecting the data and for what purpose we are using the data that uh, that transparency we have to bring so that the user who shares the data will also come to know like for what purpose we we are actually providing our own person why we are pro sharing our personal data so that transparency we have to bring uh, next is like we have to practice some ethical design principles that includes equality transparency and privacy so we have to focus on these things and we have to create an ethical design principles uh, next is like we have to educate the customer like telling see these are the pros and cons that one once we are using the dark patterns it is going to lose your business lose the trust loyalty and everything and we have to show with uh, examples and what are the benefits if uh, of not using this so likewise we have to uh, educate the customer and next is like uh, government rules and regulations that has to be get uh, strictly monitored and that how also has to change periodically that amendments and everything has to uh, come periodically uh, and also it should safeguard the users freedom and uh, their rights customer rights and freedom so that is another way and again we have to actually as a, we all are designers so we will be more uh, widely taken the user feedbacks and those things so we have to again for this also we have to take user feedbacks and from that we have to actually understand their uh, motivations their pain points their wants their needs and everything and based on that we have to always iterate the designs uh, to make it more uh, user friendly uh, and next is like uh, third party sources so it's like uh, as i told in the previous example like social media they are actually uh, creating fake testimonials and those things so in such cases we have to actually bring a third party sources for reviews for uh, uh, reviews and awards and recognitions and ratings and everything so that is actually helping the helping the uh, helping the users to choose which product is the best based on the true reviews and everything so that we can bring uh, next is like always uh, customer is a king so uh, we have to always respect the users and uh, we all, always have to make their life easier so we have to give an option to uh, opt out easily so without taking the, without taking control of their privacy we have to always respect their privacy and uh, next is like uh, it's one of the uh, quote which i liked in this situation like unexamined defaults can end up taking our life in the world uh, in the wrong direction so here exactly the as we know that certain apps are actually uh, taking our data because they are actually creating some settings as default so likewise we have to actually uh, make the uh, default settings in a way like it should be helpful for the user not uh, we have to respect their privacy and everything as per that we have to actually design and create the uh, default settings uh, next is like usability testing uh, that is like we have to uncover the problems of the users then we have to find a, uh, the opportunities and then we have to always iterate the designs and those things uh, based on that results so that also we have to uh, encompass and also next thing is like we have to uh, collect feedback in by in different forms not only in one way uh, like via email via text via uh, sms via another uh, ways so it's like multiple ways we have to actually collect feedback from the user and we have to actually uh, bring uh, we have to always consider that uh, feedback and we have to always improve their experience so these are some possible solutions we have to think about dark patterns next is like global laws against dark patterns so uh, here we know that us it's the top of the world where you can there is a commission called federal trade, trade commission and they have recognized more than 30 dark patterns uh, in september 2022 report 
uh, as per Saturn 2022 report. And uh, they have discussed like, uh, so one of the famous thing is like Amazon, uh, 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 they face some legal actions uh, based on the FTC report. So because uh, there are certain uh, patterns made kids to make a lot of purchases, uh, which cost uh, their parents to uh, pay more bills. So, uh, so that is the one of the famous case uh, that was that came under the FTC uh, report. And another thing is like EU, that is a European Union. They have a, a act called Digital Service Act (DSA), and there they are actually. Uh, uh, fi they are uh, fighting dark patterns and they are uh, ensuring the customer rights and they safeguard their citizens and uh, digital realm. And here, uh, one of the uh, main thing uh, that we just need to think is that uh, they are actually, uh, their fine is actually 6% of the global turnover uh, of any companies. Uh, it's global turnover, 6% they have to pay as fine if they found some, uh, they have to face some legal uh, battle with EU. So and uh, India also have a regulatory framework. So one is like Customer Protection Act 2019. So here they the tricky patterns that trick customers and block their rights to proper information are banned by the uh, Customer Pro Protection Act 2019. Also, there are other guideline centers uh, from the center that is the Department of Customer Affairs and Advertising Standard Council of India, they will collaborate for dark pattern guidelines. So here e-commerce giants like Flipkart, Zomato, Amazon, Google, they all are urged to form self-regulation against these practices. And online platforms can establish ethical design to discourage dark patterns. Uh, so promoting responsible design, independent audits and self-regulations can address dark patterns concern. So this includes banning certain patterns, supporting user-friendly digital choices and empowering regulators. So uh, another one is like regulatory framework of uh, framework in India that is under Department of Consumer Affairs. So it is one of the two departments under the Ministry of Customer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution. So implementing of Customer Protection Act of 19, 2019. And there is another one like Advertisement Standard Council of India. It's formed in 1985. It's independent self-regulatory group of industry professionals ensuring dissonance in Indian ads. Their goal is to honest, fair, and is ASCI code compliant uh, advertisements. Now, uh, any user can actually report cases uh, against dark patterns. So they are encouraging the user to report dark patterns incidents. Uh, so there is a customer care number. So the national helpline number is 1915 and for WhatsApp, it's 8800001915. So this is actually urged by the Union Consumer, Consumer Affairs Ministry. Yeah. So next is like a quiz uh, I'm planning. So I need your support. Like uh, I will be asking some questions based on the presentation. Uh, so you have to just uh, comment on the chat. So first question is, which is not a type of dark pattern according to this wonder, like, is it privacy security or hidden cost or beehive motel or disguised ads? I think you guys can actually uh, type in the comments. Yeah, if, uh, okay, I'm getting some. Yeah, I'm getting some interesting answers. Okay, so the answer is C, P high mutant. So other three are uh, dark patterns, except P high mutant. 
it's uh, actually roach mortal. So, so next question is like the term dark patterns was coined by whom? Is it Dr. Harry Brignall or maybe Mackenzie Scott or Dr. Stephen Hawking or Bill Gates? Please comment on the chat window. OK, I think most of them answered correctly. It's Dr. Harry Brennan. So the final question uh, that is like many people point to dark patterns as cause for spread of what? Is it virus, fake news, chain emails or hacking? So. I think only one person answered so far. Yeah. Yeah, it's fake news. Yeah. So uh, these are some of the resources on back patterns and ethical design. Uh, if you are more interested to learn about this subject, so one is darkpatterns.org that is actually started by Dr. Uh, Brennan itself. So it's his website. Other than that, there is a weird article that you can get like how to spot and avoid dark patterns on web. Uh, and the third one is like a growth design interactive case study. So that is a case study regarding the dark pattern. So these are the resources uh, on dark patterns and ethical design if you are more interested to learn. Thank you. So thank you so much, Parameshwaran, uh, for the wonderful session. And uh, I, I, the, I think interesting quiz uh, to kind of uh, check on whether we were actually listening to you. Um, uh, it was great uh, listening to the different dark, dark patterns. I think uh, we every day see them in the applications we use. Yeah. But um, as designers, I think, uh, or, uh, you know, a, anyone who works with applications, I think we should be more aware and um, start observing more about how much they cre creep into our lives without us knowing. We hope to see all of you um, as we come to you with another webinar. Until then, stay tuned. Thank you.